Hello everyone. Today I'm going to give an overview of my latest PhD thesis chapter, The Homogenisation of Avian Ecomorphological Diversity. As we're all aware, we're in the midst of an extinction crisis. We know that certain types of species, such as large frugivores, are more at risk of extinction than others, but are we generally losing key functions or roles and morphologies at a greater rate than expected across the tree of life and across space? The loss of such ecomorphological diversity would lead to a homogenisation of species ecomorphology, having potential knock-on effects for ecosystem functioning. Here, I assess whether the extinction of each IUCN threat category leads to ecomorphological homogenisation and look at two key questions. What does this look like globally across the whole bird class? And spatially, are certain ecoregions more susceptible to losing ecomorphological diversity than others? So, to answer these questions, we extracted IUCN threat categories critically endangered to least concern for each bird species. We then overlapped range maps from BirdLife International with ecoregions to extract a list of which species occur in each. Species trait data were collected predominantly from the Natural History Museum at Tring and included wing and tarsus length, bill shape from 3D scans and body size from the Elton Traits database. The trait data were used to calculate a score of ecomorphological diversity. To do this, we ran a principal components analysis and calculated the mean distance to centroid for the morphospace. This is depicted simply here on the left, where you have an intact community of five species. The mean distance to centroid is the average distance between each species and the central point. We then drop each IUCN category in turn and calculate the mean distance to centroid. Here we have dropped two critically endangered species. Homogenization occurs where mean distance to centroid decreases, as we find here. Species are more similar to each other in terms of their traits. We use the standard effect size to see whether communities are more or less homogenised than expected. This is simply the actual mean distance to centroid minus the mean of 1,000 simulated communities with the same number of species lost. In the above example, this would be two species. This is then divided by the standard deviation of these null communities. A positive cess indicates that a community is more ecomorphologically diverse than expected, and a negative cess indicates homogenisation. So we did this for the whole global list of bird species, and this is what we found. This plot shows remaining species richness across the x-axis, going from intact to only least concerned species remaining. The y-axis shows the cess of mean distance to centroid. As you can see, as IUCN categories are removed, the cess becomes considerably negative. A value lower than minus 2 shows a significant deviation from that expected by chance. We are seeing a clear impact of ecomorphological homogenisation across birds. But what does this look like across space? This map shows the standard effect size mean distance to centroid for each ecoregion when we lose critically endangered species. White areas on the map are those where no critically endangered species are lost. Darker colours indicate the most homogenisation, and this is significant under a value of minus 2. You can see the most imperiled areas are across parts of East Asia, particularly the Himalayan uplands and parts of the African continent. When we further lose endangered species, the picture is broadly similar, with more ecoregions added as endangered species are found in these areas. For both, the top five most ecomorphologically imperiled regions are in this area in the Himalayan uplands. Specifically, these are the ecoregions that become most homogenised once losing critically endangered species. And digging deeper, these regions contain some or all of these iconic species, including four vulture species. Each ecoregion can be grouped into one of 14 major biomes which broadly capture major habitat types. The top 10 most homogenised ecoregions are grouped here. If we group all ecoregions by their biome and calculate the median, the box and whisker plot shows the spread of the values in more detail. The median scores of cess mean distance to centroid are along the y-axis and biomes are along the x-axis. The stars correspond to the biomes of the top 10 ecoregions identified above. Tropical coniferous forest and tropical grassland are the most threatened biomes. Notably, tropical moist forest averages at less negative than minus 2, but the spread of values is the greatest for any biome, indicating that some tropical areas are at particular risk of ecomorphological homogenisation, whilst others are less so. These findings imply that geographical location, as well as major habitat type, is important. So, to wrap up. Overall, we find a clear pattern of ecomorphological homogenisation across the bird family, with mean distance to centroid shrinking more quickly than the null expectation. This plays out spatially, with ecoregions around the Himalayas being particularly at risk of ecomorphological homogenisation, given the likely loss of critically endangered and endangered species from the region. Major habitat type is important, particularly alongside geographic location. Okay, thank you very much for listening, and I look forward to answering any questions on the Slack channel.